everybody, this is Mike with another Kickstarter preview. Today we're looking at Three Tail, an adventure game coming to Kickstarter soon. This is a cooperative game for one to three players, but you always have three characters. You just split them among the players. I'm going to do a solo playthrough, doing all three. I'll start by going through the basics of play, then we'll do the full playthrough, and I'll end with my thoughts. So if you want to hear kind of a mini review on what I've played so far, you can skip to the end or watch the whole thing. And a quick reminder that we get no compensation for our Kickstarter coverage. We just like to help you make an informed decision. And if you like our content, please consider supporting us through Patreon for early access to our videos. You can listen to our weekly podcast, check out our streaming channel, or join in the conversation on our Discord. So as I mentioned, the party of adventurers in Three Tales is always three characters. And each of them has six virtues. This is love, and I don't remember the names of the rest, but I know what their mechanical effects are. This first one, love, gives you more dice to roll in combat. This one gives you mitigation of those dice. This one gives you bonus cards that can give you random bonus actions every turn. This little sickle one determines how many actions you get. This little growing plant one gives you free upgrades every turn. And this bread one is you showing mercy to other players and giving them free upgrades. So both the ones on the right are kind of free upgrades for your characters. And you'll increase these by picking up virtue tokens from the map. You can also increase your movement speed by picking up black speed tokens. And finally, as you get these red cubes in quantities of two and then four and then six, you unlock one of the abilities unique to your character on either side. So when I get two of these cubes, I can either take her left or her right ability. Then if I build up to four more, I can take the left or the right and so on. Each character also has these three spirit cubes. You can use these to run away from combat or completely ignore one round of combat damage to your character. And how damage works for monsters is every damage you take means you decrease one of your virtues one. So your character basically de-levels as you get hurt. Additionally, you've got a spot to hold your bonus cards, which again come from this uh, third from the left little slider virtue here. This is where you can hold a quest your character is trying to complete. And then your character can have three active artifacts in a given turn for their head, hands and feet. Now, the game has two main phases. First, you have the pass where you're going to be putting down these tiles and basically building out the board. And each tile when placed will spawn some things on it that can basically be used to upgrade your character. Like this little symbol here means upgrade one of your virtues. This upgrades the red cubes to get your unique skills. And this is a combat, which if you win, it can upgrade you a bunch. And each player's turn consists of putting down a tile and the first one can just go wherever, but each additional one has to orthogonally align with the ones that exist already. And they have these little like trees that will block movement so you can kind of try to build some paths for your characters. And the first time a tile is laid, your miniature gets placed on it. But then for the rest of the game, after you lay a tile at the beginning of your turn, you can move around a number of spaces equal to your speed, and you can perform a number of actions based on your little action virtue here. Dark gray area from zero to two, you can perform one action. Once you get to the lighter gray, three to six, it's two actions three actions and eventually four actions. And that's how all five of the virtues with the differently colored borders work. Like over here, you can't modify any dice at level one. You can modify one die at level two, two dice, and then three dice. Uh, zero bonus cards, one, two, three. Zero free level ups, one, two, three. You get the idea. The only one that breaks that rule is love. The combat one, in this case, that's just how many dice you roll. So if you have a nine love, you can roll nine dice. When the second tile is placed, the second character will come out. They can move and perform one or more actions on their turn. An action generally just picking up something or starting a combat or opening a treasure chest on their space. And then the third tile will come out with the third character, and then you're just all moving around. You can move through each other's spaces, but you can't end on each other's spaces. And you can spend an action if you're next to another character to trade some things like give them an artifact or give them a quest. And additionally, there are three tiles in here with altars that will give you offerings. And if you get next to another player and kind of give them the offering, then it blesses it and it becomes an artifact, which again are very powerful ways to help you. So in the past phase, you're going to go through this entire stack of tiles. So each character will get one third of these in turns. And once you've done all those turns, you get to find out what your future is. So there are several of these in the prototype I have. There are five, I think, in the final Kickstarter. There'll be seven or more. And each one has a story and a suggestion of what kind of stats you might want to build up. So here, for the parallel land, we want a lot of fighting, a ton of mobility, a ton of gathering, a lot of consistency. I'm not quite as clear on what that means. And what happens is you have three of these, and when the pass is done, you randomly pick one of them. Then you open up the unique box for that one, you read the unique rules in the separate little scenario guide, and you find out what you have to do. Basically, with the map you've constructed, you now have to complete some objectives to try to win. And whether you win or lose, you can get a score at the end, but of course you uh, hope to win the scenario. But you can still kind of see how you did and compare your performance to future games. 
And that's about it for the rule basics. We'll see how combat works when we first get into it. But to look at my characters, I've got the Queen of Living Water, and she is very much a support character. Her highest virtue is the Mercy One that gives bonuses to other characters, and some of her skills go along with that. We've also got the Youngest Son, very much focused on fighting, and also has some ways to get artifacts. And the Unborn Maiden, somewhat similar, also good at fighting, also good with artifacts, though in her own way. And looking at the three possibilities, we have the Crown of Evil, full fighting, full supporting, a little bit of mobility. The Parallel Land, a lot of fighting, tons of mobility, tons of gathering. And the Information Flood, not much fighting, but tons of mobility, tons of gathering. So it seems like if I focus on leveling up my characters in their movement and their fighting, I'll probably have a decent chance with any of these. We'll see how it goes. So here's our first tile. We've got a pretty easy fight, although all of them are tough until you level up a bit. We've got one of the altars with an offering we can go grab, and we can also drop off stuff there and like convert it into other stuff, like sacrifice some artifacts to get a different one. And finally, we've got a basic virtue upgrade. And first, we populate all of the tokens on it. And then I choose where I want to start the Queen of Living Water. I'm going to start her right on this little virtue space. That'll be her one action, but she can still use her two movement, and I guess I'll get her on this offering. I don't want her to fight. She has no combat capabilities. And for her upgrade, I'm going to go ahead and do this one. So now, at the end of her turn, she can give somebody else a one virtue upgrade. And the youngest son's about to go. I could boost up his love to be a better fighter, get him one die of mitigation. But he's pretty close to getting a second action that would let him pick up two things a turn. So let's work on that first. Okay, speaking of the youngest son, wow, we got another altar already. Well, we'll put them near each other because, again, you can, like, trade the offerings to each other to get some artifacts. So yeah, let's go ahead and do that. But that is a level three fight. We don't want to do that. But I'm going to have the youngest son start on the offering. He uses one action to pick it up. And then for his two movement, he'll just move over here. It doesn't hurt you to be on tokens. You can end your turn on them and such. So it'll take one action for him to give this to the Queen of Living Water. And we're going to draw an artifact and we'll pick which of them gets it. But first, we're putting out to the Unborn Maid. And we've got a Virtue Space. Ooh, a quest. That can give you some nice rewards and a movement upgrade. And we'll put her pretty near the rest of the crew. There's a black cube there. It's a little bit hard to see. I think I want to pick up the quest first and find out what it might be. So she'll spend her one action to get that. And here we go. In your covenant, the precious trousseau unravels in front of your eyes. The wind whispers melodiously. You have now seen your way home. Okay, so if she collects three of the red cubes from the map, she gets a free level two artifact. That's not too bad. So now we know that she wants to get those red artifacts. Uh, for now, she still has two movement left. We want to spread out a little bit except for the offering. So let's actually have her maybe stay down here and we'll put another tile there later. And right, coming back to the Queen of Living Water, we've got a speed upgrade, a virtue upgrade, and a simple fight. And I think I'll put it to the north for her to go towards later. But for now, she is going to pick up this offering. And even though it's a bit of a way, she's just going to hang out because she wants to use an action to give it to the youngest son and bless it later. But she does still get to give someone an upgrade, and she'll go ahead and give the youngest son a second action now, because he has reached the uh, lighter gray spot. He gets plus one action every turn. So he can still only move a two, but he can interact with or pick up up to two things in those movements. To his turn. Okay, we got a treasure. That's a lot nicer than a fight that might hurt us. Ooh, and one of the red cubes want to get that near the unborn maiden and a virtue. And you'll have to put these near your actual character, so I'm going to put it near the maiden. And now she can start pursuing her quest in a moment. And as for the youngest son, he's got two actions and two movement now. He's going to go ahead and give an offering to the Queen of the Living Water first. And there's three altars, three offerings in the game at total. The first one you give to somebody will get a level one artifact, the second a level two, the third a level three, they get more powerful. And we got the key, which is a head artifact, level one, you can use it an infinite number of times. It says the treasure of your heart awaits you. When you open a treasure, you pick which card to activate from the top three in the deck. So normally if one of them, for example, picked up this level two treasure, they would draw a level two treasure card and they would resolve it. But this will let you pick three cards and choose which one you want to resolve. And I can choose which of the two heroes get this, but I imagine the youngest son might be fighting. So let's assume she's going to do some more treasure hunting. Now he's got two movement and one action left, but he doesn't want to wander too far away from her because she's going to give him the other offering. So he'll just go down here and for his second action, pick up a speed upgrade. Which means now instead of two every turn, he can move three, but he's not going to use that right now. He doesn't want to run away from his friend. Okay, now the Unborn Maiden's placement. Another level three fight. Those are so tough. I'm definitely going to avoid it until late game. Uh, Virtue and a speed upgrade. She's already got a lot of stuff over here. So I'm actually going to put it near the youngest prince, I think. And he can move pretty far. And then we know what she wants to be doing, getting those red cubes. So she'll move here, use her one action. Then I guess head up to the treasure chest. Or actually, you know what? She can head for the Virtue and I can save the treasure chest for the Queen of Living Water. 
And red cubes, as I mentioned, need to reach a certain level. So this one does nothing, but the next one will let her pick one of these two upgrades. She can either get an immediate boost of four in her love virtue to roll more dice in combat, or she can take a level two artifact. I'm probably uh, going to do that right one there. I'm also going to put a token on her quest just to mark that she's one third of the way there. All right, back to the Queen of Living Water. We've got another red cube. Let's put that near the Unborn Maiden, a virtue and a level two fight. See, so yeah, we'll get right up on there. Now for her actual turn, let's go one here and she'll spend her action to bless our second offering with the youngest son. And that gets us the Wooden Whistle, level two artifact, also for the head, like the key. Okay, you can use plus one action during your turn and Melody shall accompany thy cheerful step. Now, the youngest son already has two actions while the Queen of Living Water doesn't, so I think I'm going to give it to her. And the rule is you can only use one artifact of each type per turn, but you can switch them out for each turn. So like this turn, I could use the key if she's going to pick up a treasure, and then next turn I could get a second action. So for now, I'll just say this is kind of like in her inventory and she won't worry about it. And for her second move, she'll go here, and now she's within two movement of the treasure, although we got to get some other stuff up here or some movement upgrades for her. And the Queen of Living Water gets to give one upgrade to somebody else. I'm almost thinking I should upgrade the Unborn Maiden's bread, too, and then they can kind of, like, pass some upgrades back and forth. Yeah, I like that idea. All right, youngest son, let's see. Level three treasure watch. I actually don't really like very much because you can even hurt yourself with these, although they do have the chance of the strongest upgrade and a movement. We like that for our quests and a virtue. Yeah, I'm a little worried about the uh, water lady having enough to do, so let's actually put that near her. I want to get all these characters at least a few movement upgrades before the pass is done so they can help out with the quest better. But as for the youngest son, he's got three movement and two actions. So let's see, I guess one, two, three, or one, two, three. Well, let's start out with the double white. So one, two, three. And yeah, you know, I like the idea of us just spreading the mercy around. So let's get him one away from giving an upgrade to other characters every turn. Okay, now for the Unborn Maiden. Ooh, a level one treasure and another quest and a virtue. Well, she's already questing enough, and she's got a nice amount of stuff right by her. I'm actually worried about the youngest son having enough, especially with him having two actions, so let's put this stuff near him. Okay, and the Unborn Maiden, is she going to grab the red cube already? Nah, I think she'll get the virtue and then just move on to here. Because I really like the idea of all of them having bread to share. So now she's one away from giving a one bonus virtue every turn. And now the Queen of Water. Ooh, a movement, a virtue, and this is a little teleport portal. When other ones come out, it lets you uh, warp around the map. So good to kind of spread them out. But for this one, I want some movement near my friend here. So there we go. Then back to Water Lady. She's going to keep her key equipped this turn instead of getting two actions. She's just going to go here and draw a treasure. Let's show how that works. Now, here's what one level two treasure looks like. But remember, she's going to draw three. And they all have the same basic functionality. You roll three dice. And you're looking at how many successes you get. A zero, one to two, or three will give you different stuff. And for level two treasures, a zero gives you nothing. One to two gives you a pretty good bonus. And three gives you a really good bonus. For level three treasures, a zero actually hurts you, but the three is great. And for level ones, you always get something, but it's not that impressive. So let's see, we could get a gift from the heavens, a red cube or two movement, two virtue upgrades or two red cubes or two virtue upgrades or three virtue upgrades. Wow, I like that seashell. Do you dare to dive deep in search of the pearl most precious to your heart, the waves whispered? And here are the dice in the game. Pretty simple. They just have three sides with a success and three with nothing. And that's one good enough for the middle result. Which means here, the Queen of Living Water is going to get two Virtue upgrades. Oh, no, I know exactly what she's getting. This is the one that's going to let her upgrade herself once per turn. So now she's going to be just spreading the love all over the place. And crap, I can't remember if she moved or not. I think she might have moved one. So let's move her one more to get her toward the speed. Ooh, and next turn she can use the Wooden Whistle to have two actions and pick up both of these. Yes. And for her self upgrade, let's go ahead and do this one more. And she'll get a bonus card every turn that'll give her some extra actions. And for her upgrade of somebody else, let's share the love. Now this guy gets to give an upgrade, which means on his turn, he can give the Unborn Maiden an upgrade. On her turn, she can upgrade somebody else. It's a beautiful synergy. All right, now Unborn Son, where are you at? Level one fight. They aren't too tough. And a quest and a virtue. Let's see, Unborn Maiden is about to be strong enough to fight if she gets another red cube. So I think I'll put it here. But how about our youngest son? He has three movement, two actions. So one, two, first action. Now he has four movement. Three, let's open that chest for a second action. We get Grandma's Kerchief. The wind moves the light fabric, whispering, never forget where you came from. So again, nothing too great, but no matter what, we're going to get a bonus. And oh, just one. So one virtue of his choice. And let's see, does he want to go for upgrading himself a lot? Does he want to upgrade his level? Let's go here. That's, I think, called Hope. And that lets him once per round of combat change a success for an enemy into a failure or a failure for himself into success. And if we get his love up, maybe he can actually start fighting some people. Oh, before we stop, we have one move left. I guess he'll go here for next turn. 
Then he'll go and upgrade that sweet, sweet bread for the Unborn Maiden. And we'll expand our view a bit as the map gets bigger. Oh, another red cube and another virtue. I mean, that's perfect. Unborn Maiden wants the red. So let's put it up here, I guess. The man only having one action is not the greatest. She'll uh, pick up the one red cube. So she goes here. She can either get a level two artifact or add four love. She's going to go for that. Now she rolls six dice in combat. Not bad. So on that end, I think I have a plan. I'm going to have her go here. And if both the other characters boost her on their turns and get her more action, she can pick this up for herself to get a second action and then still fight this guy. Let's show you combat, maybe. And for her free upgrade of somebody else, she's going to give the Queen of Living Water her first bonus card per turn. It is the Queen of Living Water's turn, so we can show you. This is what they look like. This turn, she can either have plus one movement or plus one action. Her choice. But first, let's put down her tile. Red, white, treasure. Well, it can't hurt to kind of uh, combine everybody's air. Oh, wait, that would block off that little passage entirely. Let's do that instead. And she's definitely going to use the wooden whistle this turn, so she gets two actions. And she's going to go one, two. And for her actions, get an extra movement and a virtue. And with that extra movement, she has one more. So let's go over here and get her to uh, that virtue and movement. All right, I almost forgot her bonus card. Let's use the extra movement, I guess. And then she gets one virtue from the virtue she picked up. We'll give her some love so she can start fighting theoretically. And then she can upgrade herself again. Let's give herself another love. Actually, you know what? Never mind. If I can get her two red cubes, she can give her mercy bonus uh, twice per turn. So I'm going to get this up too. If I can get it up two more and then again get her two red cubes, she will be uh, just <laughs> making everybody the best ever. But for now, she just gets one boost and we're going to make the unborn maiden have two actions, remember? Now it's the unborn son. He's got four movement, two actions. And there's a movement, virtue, and quest. I think he's probably going to like head this way and get some of this stuff. So maybe we'll actually boost up our water lady over here on her next turn. But as for the youngest son himself, remember, he's got two actions and four movements. So that'll be one, walk, walk, uh, two, walk. Oh, wait, no, no, he has one movement left, doesn't he? Boom, there we go. So next turn, he can get something else. So that gives him a red and one white. And you know what? I guess being able to upgrade himself every turn isn't a bad thing. And as for his upgrade to somebody else, there we go, as planned. And now the Unborn Maiden's turn. We've got this one treasure, this one virtue. I don't want to crowd things up too much up here. We can also start moving the other characters that way and not just our water lady. All right, now our plan comes to fruition. For her first action, she'll pick up that and she'll boost herself to getting two actions per turn. Yeah, but she only has two movement. Well, let's stick to the plan and move on to the combat. That'll be her second action and she still has one movement left. At least I think she does. Did she start there? <laughs> it's hard to remember. And here we go. Let's show you a fight. The cunning goldfish. He's got three movement, which is going to be used to determine initiative. Uh, six life, basically. is how much damage we have to do. And four strength. How many dice he rolls? Here's his reward. Wishes three. I want to grant. Oh, don't worry. They are free. What if wishes undeserved in a shining cage? Hold thee. All right, you tricky goldfish. So combat is pretty straightforward. We compare speeds. He's got three. I've got two. So he's going to attack first. We roll his full strength, which is four dice, two hits. If we add hope up to three or seven or higher, we could flip some of those to failures, but here we don't. So we have to take those two hits as damage to our virtues, so we'll lower both of those. And alternatively, I could throw away one of my three blue spirit cubes for the rest of the game to completely negate his damage, but for two, that's not worth it. And now I get to respond, rolling my love six dice. Here we go, four hits. So he takes four damage, but he's not defeated until we reach his uh, stamina there, his life value six. And you just go like that until one of you dies. If you want to spend a blue cube, you can run away from combat. He hit me for two again. And <laughs> let's lower my love, but then I don't want to roll four dice and I might not kill him. So I guess we'll lower my actions back down. Darn it. But I only need two hits to finish him off. That's more than enough. So I get his bonuses, two red cubes and a level one artifact. Now, sadly, I thought I was going to finish my quest, but it says specifically collect three red from the map. So I still need to get one more. Darn. But she is halfway to her next skill, which is either do plus two damage during each round of attack. That's pretty amazing. Or when choosing an artifact, look at all the cards and pick one. Oh, man, those are both good. Speaking of artifacts, the fish gave her the Nestinarian Coals. Coals shall burn at your feet so you can hurtle over obstacles. You run away from battle without sacrificing blue. Oh, so it just lets me run away whenever I want to. Not sure that's great for a character who's fighting, but uh, okay. But if she goes to one of the altars as an action, you can trade in stuff. So she can actually throw away a level one artifact to gain two red cubes, which would level her up. That might be worth it. Sadly, she is slow. I got to move her only one more and she's still more than two away from the speed here. Maybe I'll add like a tile down here. 
Meanwhile, she gets to upgrade somebody one. Let's do Queen of Living Water. If she can pick up a white cube on her turn, she'll be able to upgrade somebody else twice. And then if she gets two red cubes, double that. Pretty amazing. First, let's draw our tile. Ooh, the last altar, which means the offering would give us a level three artifact and a really tough fight and a virtue. I was worried about her not having an action to do, so maybe we can put that down here, I guess. Or maybe we go like that and have like the youngest son run down and grab it. All right, our water lady has two actions if she uses her water and whistle, which she's going to, and she can move three. Let's go like one, pick that up. Two, three, and get the treasure, maybe? And she doesn't have her key equipped, so she only draws one, the box of riches. So she can get a bread, which she was going to upgrade anyway, or a movement, or two virtue. Although, to be fair, I have to choose how I use the virtue I picked up first, so I'm going to do that, so hopefully I don't roll the bread. And two. That's the middle result. One movement, not bad. And now that she can give two upgrades to someone, should she give her back two actions? Well, with her movement still being slow, I don't think she can take advantage of two actions. So let's instead boost the youngest son to leveling himself up every turn. Oh, no, no, I forgot to draw her bonus card. Oh, <laughs> it's nothing, so never mind. But she does get to upgrade herself one. Um, I think she needs to start getting some love. Or should we just make her bonus to others crazy? Uh... <laughs> Although it might be bad if the quest is about combat and she can't fight. Do a red, a white, and a treasure. I kind of want to put this up near Water Lady, but I need to get a red to finish off that quest. So let's do it here. All right, the youngest son has four movement, two actions. Let's do one action, one, two movement, second action, three, uh, four movement, and get near the offering and near her. And let's bump that fighting up so we can start fighting some battles. Then he gets to bump himself up again and somebody else. Uh, let's start working toward Unborn Maiden Evan, two actions again. And she's only got two movement, which is terrible. There's another red cube and a white cube in a battle. You know, I'm actually going to put it up here because I really want Water Lady to get the red cube that'll let her double up on that boosting of others, which would be amazing. And then uh, she's only got two movements, so she'll go here. She'll get uh, one more action back for herself, but she can't use it because she's just standing in the middle of nowhere. But she does get to boost somebody else. Let's get the queen up towards super support level. Although the stack is running low and none of them have too many turns left. Okay, we got a virtue, a simple chest, and a fight. Now let's put it like maybe over here. With her whistle, the water lady has four movement, two actions. So we'll go one, pick up, two, three, pick up, and then let's actually go back here. Maybe like add a red tile up there. So she's halfway to her great skill. She's almost here. And a quick note, if she chose to use her one level up to boost this, that's fine. But she would not get the bonus this turn, but she'll still do it. So now she's given somebody two upgrades, or she can split it. And let's boost down the youngest son to have more love. Speaking of youngest son, go another red cube. Let's give it to water. So there we go. Next turn's going to be sick. As for the youngest son, he's got four move and two actions. One, two, three. Pick up offering four. Give offering. There we go. Not going to fight that level three. So that's the last offering. We're going to draw a level three artifact. Give it to one of the two of them. Living water. Add one spirit. That's one that lets you run away from a fight or cancel their damage for a turn. If you have the Coppers 2 artifact, add 2 Spirit, some or all of which can be gifted to another player. Drink from the source to add life to your life. This is a one-time use artifact. But I can also give it away that altar to get 4 red. I think I'm going to keep it on the boy and have him try to upgrade himself. All right, Unborn Maiden. Ooh, another Teleport and Movement and White. And this is actually perfect because the Unborn Maiden is near another Teleporter and there's not much movement near her, so let's get her over here. Oh, wait, wait, hold on. I forgot to level him up. And let's level her up towards some mitigation. I mean, now she's got two movement and two actions. So let's do this one and get that. Which completes this and she gets a level two artifact. The Bloodied Spear. Oh my gosh, she just inflicts three damage every time she fights. The Blade Stay with your foe's blood shall always be true. I'm assuming this is once per combat round, maybe? I mean, this seems pretty good, but she definitely wants it. She's got one more movement. Quite, I wanted her to go over there, but now I kind of want her to not waste the extra movement. I guess she could get another quest. It won't hurt if she doesn't complete it. Collect five treasures to like a level three artifact. I don't know if that's going to happen. But yeah, most important thing for her is to get her some more movement and another red. And then, I mean, gosh, I'm still not quite sure if the Bloody Spear is like once per combat or every combat. But either way, she'll be messing some people up. And she gets to give somebody else a level up. And somebody needs to start boosting the queen's fighting power. So I'll do that. And speaking of the queen. Um, nothing too interesting on that tile. Well, actually, that's not true. We might put it near the youngest son, see if he wants to do another fight. Because he should be strong enough to come out ahead. All right, there we go. But I promised a big turn, and here it is time to deliver. So she has four movement and two actions with her whistle, so that's one. 
Oh, where should you go? Two, three, four and fight? No. Two, three, four and get kind of trapped up there. Grab the treasure chest. You know, I don't think she's going to do a second action. Level three treasure chests are just so hit or miss for me. So two, three, four. Let's get her back into kind of the meaningful area. But the big thing is she gets to show mercy twice during your turn, which means she can give six upgrades to everybody else. One to herself. Love, love, love. There we go. Good God. Six upgrades. One, two. Now she can flip one die per combat. Three, four, five. Now she can start upgrading herself. And six. Let's give him more love dice. And once again, I forgot her bonus. An extra action or a free die change. That doesn't matter either. Now we're very close to the future. Only a few turns left for each of them. Here's a big combat, decent treasure chest. Nothing super interesting there. I guess I can like put the treasure near that other treasure. Okay, the youngest son, let's do our plan. So he's going to go one, his first action. He's got three movement left. Trading this living water for four red cubes. And one will let him level up. He's going to do that, which will give him another red cube, which means we'll immediately level up again. It says after every battle one, gain an action. After every battle one, get a level one artifact. I like that one. His six red is much better, but we're certainly not there. Oh, and he did get two movement there as well. Wow, he's got five movement left in one action. So yeah, let's hit all the way. One, two, three, uh, four, five. I'd rather do the treasure chest. And one, which for the Locket of Skies means one red cube. Five more, and he gets his ultimate boost. And he gets to upgrade himself, one, and somebody else, which is certainly going to be the Queen of Living Water being able to fight. All right, as for the Unborn Maiden, quest, I don't care. Level two fight, maybe. Well, she's planning to move up here with the teleporter, so we'll do that. Gosh, she's got only two movements. So terrible. Now, the teleport is free, so she's going to go here. That'll get her a third movement. And then, can she pick up another quest? I mean, I guess. If you win five battles, take a level three artifact and a sacred stone. Those tend to help out a ton at the end. So let's get rid of this one. I can't remember if they can even hold it two at a time and just say she has this. Now she gets one level up for herself, one for somebody else, which will keep on pumping the queen to be a decent fighter. And we're down to two turns for each of them. Then we get to see what our actual quest is. Ooh, movement and virtue. Definitely get that over here near our two ladies that are a little bit slower right now. All right, Queen of Living Water. Let's actually remember. Oh, wow. She's got four actions this turn. Well, that's definitely going to be silly. Let's go ahead and use her key instead of her wooden whistle and have three. Well, let's see. One, two, three, four movement. She could get a fifth movement, so then keep on going. And I think she's going to throw away the key. That's not going to be too useful pretty soon. That's going to get her two more reds. And oh, my gosh. When showing mercy, add the same amount of the chosen virtue to yourself. Wait, so that would be doubled? Oh my gosh, well, she's definitely going to spend an action next turn. Wait, she got five moving. Wait, she's got another action this turn, right? So screw it, we're throwing away this whistle. That gets her three red, so yes. What is the other option? You can give red to other players instead of yourself. Uh, whatever. So I think now she gets to level up six people and then herself six. Is that right? <laughs> I don't know. So let's see. Let's do youngest son. One, two, three, four. Now he can flip two dice per combat. An unborn maiden. Get her toward the same thing, which will mean, I guess, that she gets six. And what the heck? She'll use her own power up to go to seven. Now she can flip two dice per combat. She's like almost as good as them now. This is a little broken, but uh, it's fun. All right. Youngest son. Another teleporter and some other stuff. And honestly, I think there's enough stuff on the board. I just want to get the teleporters kind of spread around because I don't know what the quest will entail yet. All right, and he's got six movement and two actions. One, two, three, four, five, six. I can't reach those level two fights. He can get to the level one. Let's do that. One, two, three. That'll be his first action. So he has three movement left and another action. And it's the Moth of Gloom. Magnificent wings obscure your sight. Their fluttering threatens to blow you away to a world of eternal darkness. So his speed is four. Mine is seven. I get to roll eight dice and I can change two of them because I've reached the next color up either in his attack or mine. So I just want to probably get five hits and kill him straight up if I can. Here we go. Yep. And uh, I can change two of them to successes. And there we go. Dead. Means I get one virtue, one speed, one level one artifact and another level one artifact from his ability. Now let's see. I guess I'll keep on pumping his love. Okay, your beloved's gift is a one-time use to add three more love. Maybe I'll pass that to the Queen of Living Water. Oh my gosh, I'm in the telescope. Add three. Wow, okay. Uh, <laughs> so since they're both helmets, I can't use both of them on the same term, but what the heck. Let's uh, go ahead and use the plus three love one now, so that's trashed. We can use this one next turn. Can I get to upgrade one thing? I mean, geez, I'm not even sure. I guess maybe uh, start working on this. Now, like we've been doing, we'll keep pumping the love of the Queen of Living Water. Our next tile, move, virtue, and a treasure. 
You know, I'm about getting this lady to not move so slowly. So there we go. Oh, wait, wait. I forgot he had some movement left and an action. And with his new boosted movement, I think he can get to this level two treasure. The empty scabbard. Oops, it's empty. <laughs> Seems you're out of luck. The sword is gone. Come on, people. Well, that action was certainly not worth rewinding to. Let's go to her in our second to last action before the future. She's got three movement, two actions. I'm thinking maybe like one, two, three, get a movement in that. Sure. So one, two, pick up, three, pick up. Oh, and then she gets a fourth movement so she can head back that way. So removes it four. And uh, let's see, I guess she'll start doing that. She can boost herself. There we go. Two rerolls or changes. And keep spreading the love to the queen. And speaking of the queen, the last turn for her before we see new things. And oh, it's a new red. The unborn maiden only needs one more to level up again. Let's put it near her. See, I think like that. And oh no, I just realized the Queen of Living Water spent her uh, item that let her get two actions. So now she's down to one again. But she can move five. So what does she want to do with her one action? I feel like leveling up is pretty good for her. Let's uh, go ahead and get the movement. And then, I don't know, she'll kind of try to be in the middle of things. So I get her to six speed. She can upgrade one thing herself. Let's do love. And then she can give six upgrades and get them for herself. God, that's crazy. Oh, bonus card. Plus one move. We're not going to worry about it. Yeah, I think one, two, three, and then four, five, six. Get her really close to being awesome. And then with her new ability, if I'm reading it right, boom, boom, we are tough. All right, and youngest son's last placement. Let's see if we can get him one more fight. Here we go. Get it right near him. So he's got, what, seven speed? So one, two, three. We'll fight that guy, and then we'll see where we go from there. So four movement left, one action. Another level one fight. I imagine he'll win quickly. The bear on guard. The enemy slips away. It leaves behind treasure one. The trail had not yet lost its warmth. It leads to a long sought cave. Well, that sucks. I don't get a free artifact for a bear leaving. The enchanted drapes? The enchanted drapes. Come on, people. <laughs> this is not what I'm after. A random thought crosses your mind. What lies hidden behind the long forsaken hopes and dreams? Okay, so we'll probably just get some virtues. Uh, okay, that's just one virtue. Uh, let's keep doing this one since love is almost maxed out. And he's got four movement left. I could go for a level three battle. It's like maybe a bad idea. They tend to be pretty tough. Yeah, let's not do that. <laughs> let's get this and head there. So one more of these. Then he gets to boost it again. And he can boost somebody else. Which, heck, I guess will be the Queen of Living Waters actions. Give me a break. And the last placement of all, the last turn of all. Well, until we get to see the true objective. I guess we'll put it here. Now she's got four movements, still not too fast, and two actions, so one, two, we definitely want that, and I think probably a treasure would be the best thing, so three, and then she can start moving that way. All right, so she's definitely going to get the one that helps her do two extra damage in every round of combat, because that's ridiculous, <laughs> and she's probably not going to get too many artifacts at this point. And she gets a broken clay pot. Ooh, I hope I get the plus one movement. Wine as red as blood was dripping into the pieces of the broken jar. Don't you feel an unquenchable desire to taste it? No, what? <laughs> what are you doing? I don't want to be a vampire, but I still got plus one speed to five. That makes me feel a little better. So all of them have at least five speed. And if we get one of those like gathering around quests, that should be awesome. And she gets to bump herself up one. Boom, two, three changes and somebody else. Queen Living Water, not quite to a second action, but close. And with that, we have built the completed map. and We're going to go into the future. But first, everything gets cleared away. None of these tokens remain. We're just going to have the objective specific stuff. So we could have the information flood, the crown of evil, or the parallel land. Let's find out. Oh, interesting, we got the one with not much fighting. What do we build up for? But, I mean, it's mobility and gathering. I think we'll still be okay with that. In the future, an information flood awaits you. Your world will begin to crumble at your feet under the inflowing words which ring untrue. The Ark of Truth will be your only safe haven where you can find respite and protection, and in the end, salvation. You shall be flooded with redundant words and blatant lies. They shall approach you like real waves, threaten to slow you down and sink your mind, to weaken your spirit and make you blind. Words of wisdom are the key to your deliverance. If you manage to collect a suitable offering, you shall be able to find a land far, far away and walk the revelational pathway. We're going to get a little miniature. We're going to unlock the box. Let's see what's happening. By the way, this is the point. I'll also put a new chapter. If you don't want to have any spoilers, uh, don't watch this because this is going to be one of the uh, seven or more things that you could see in the game. Right, so here is the Ark of Truth looking pretty cool. And it goes on an altar of my choice. I'm just going to go for this one that's uh, kind of in the middle of everything. And each of the scenarios will tell you to put new tokens on certain spaces. In this case, I'm putting cartographers on each of the spaces that originally had a quest. I'm putting translators on each of the level two fight spaces. 
and Hypnotist on each of the level three fight spaces. And we get some unique cards. Here we have the Arc of Truth. We're going to try to collect 42 words of truth on this. And this is an unusual one. We're actually putting the white cubes back out. These become single words of truth, although I'm assuming I can get a lot more than one per action if I go to the other places. And for now, I have fewer white cubes in spaces. So I'm just going to guess I don't fill all of them. All right, and there are special rules for each scenario. Uh, here, of course, these are just printed out. But it says at the start of each character's turn, they have to take away one tile. And they have to prefer tiles that have fewer connections to others, like this little outlying one here would be first. And then we have to roll a die that can't be modified, and on a success, we stop. On a failure, we remove a second tile. We win if we can collect 42 words of wisdom. So, I don't know how to do it yet. Let's see. All right, so Queen of Living Water is first. We'll take this tile away, and then we fail, so we have to take another one. And this random corner one with nothing on it seems fine. And she's got six movement, only one action. Terrible, so let's go one. Oh, wait, she's already on a cartographer, so she'll spend her one action here. And you get unique decks. Let's see what it says. Translator, if you have three artifacts, you don't remove a tile in the beginning of your next turn, and you don't roll a die for removing a second tile. Well, that would have been great. Uh, your arsenal should help you in an unexpected way. Your diligence in the past matters. So we were not diligent, and you do nothing. Thanks. But you still got a bunch more movement. Let's move over here and see what that does. All right, now the youngest son is about to go. Let's see if he has to remove two tiles. No, just one. This one over here is pretty innocuous. Oh, wait, wait I forgot to use the Queen of Living Waters upgrades. So I definitely want to get her actions up, which means I'll use her bread, her mercy, to upgrade somebody else. So she gets one upgrade herself. There we go. And then three upgrades times two, six, and then upgrading herself. So let's get the youngest son to one, two, three, four. Now he'll have three actions. We'll start getting the unborn maiden into the same place, which means she gains three, six. Now she has three actions. Awesome. So three actions, seven movements. So let's see. One, two. I want to do that. Three. I guess I'll do that. Four, five, um, and then like six, seven, maybe towards that. So those would be two words of wisdom. Let's see what happens when we see this hypnotist. I figure this might be a battle. Okay, so he's got 20 life, uh, 12 dice he rolls, seven speed. So we're tied. I forget who goes first in the dial check. After every attack, it adds defense equal to the number of inflicted damage. Oh, wait, wait, I bet it means the amount of damage they inflicted to me. Okay, so yes, if I can hurt him and like cancel his attacks with blue stones or whatever, then it'll be okay. Sadly, I just checked and the enemy attacks first if our speed is equal. So here comes his attack. Let's just cancel that with a blue. We've got three of them to spend, right? Now we can do attack back also with 12. and We've got the power to change three of them to hits. Oh, that is a good roll. So if we change three to hits, only one miss. That's 11 damage out of 20. He's got nine life left. All right, now they go again. Come on, a crappy roll this time. Ooh, okay. So I'm going to change three of those to misses using all of my die changes. So that means we take three damage. We have to heal him three. But I think that might be the right call. And let's see, what three damage do we want? I guess actions. We can get those back. Now, sadly, we have no dice manipulation left for her ourself on this roll. But, oh, we didn't really need it, did we? So wait, uh, that'd be nine damage since those are 12 dice. So he's got three life left. Darn it. He attacks again. Okay, so yeah, we'll change three of those to miss, and then he only does two damage, which means he heals two. We just gotta do five. And I don't think we need all those dice, right? I might regret that. Um, oh, yes, five, exactly, awesome. So we defeat him and get, what is that, just three words of wisdom? Well, I don't know if that's really worth the big fight. All right, so between the fight and his two pickups, we've got five out of 42, yikes. And then he gets to level himself up one and give somebody else one. I guess we're working on getting her more action. Certainly seems important. Okay, and for the Unborn Mistress, she has to take this away, sadly, because it's only connected by one. And then she has to remove another one. Now well, maybe that? Oh, I think I moved the wrong person for the Water Girl's turn. Darn it. Well, we'll just ignore it. Okay, so she's got five speed, two actions, like I said. Let's see what these guys do. Ooh, take three words of wisdom. The true north is the treasure of your heart. Okay, that's great. I'll take that. That was one action. She's got five movement. Let's go one, two, three, I guess. And then, like, start heading up this way. And she'll certainly level herself up to have more actions and one more person. Oh, I forgot what we're supposed to do in the Queen of Living Water to get her an extra action, but it's okay. So it's going to be her turn. She'll get six movement and currently three actions. But first, that has to go away forever. And good, nothing else. So let's do the correct character this time. Six and three actions. One, two, three, four, five, six. There we go. She can pick up that and that and that. Now I just have to get her out of there before she is eaten. Although she can use a little teleport circle there to get away. Brings us to 12 so far. We need 30 more. 
But now I'm really wondering, was I supposed to fill in every white square, but I didn't have enough cubes, so uh, I'm not sure. Still a prototype, still prototype rules. <laughs> These kind of things happen. And she gets to upgrade people six times, and herself once. Let's get him to another action. That's two. Maybe her to some more power. So that's three, one left, and some love for him too. It was two of that. She actually can't take all the love she just gave. And I forgot her bonus card again. Oh, would you give her three more love in a fight? I don't know if she could get to a fight. Um, here we go. All right, for the sun's removal, definitely that one with nothing. And uh, nice, nothing else. Now he's got seven movement and three actions. He's on one of these. So let's see, one, two. Oh, no, no, he already did that one, didn't he? Did he? No, I think somebody else did one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Get down into this area. So yeah, okay, we'll resolve two of these and here. Okay, let's see, return one tile to the map. The objects on it cannot be used. Oh, okay, so we'll just uh, basically give ourselves an extra turn. And ooh, take a level three artifact. Okay, so here you go. Random tile, don't care. And level three artifact, your ancestor's bow. Inflict 10 damage, one time use. Yep, that seems fine to me. Thanks. All right, I'll go and upgrade my love for myself and for the other one. And gosh, I don't know. Anything can be used as damage, right? All right, Unborn Maiden removes this. Thank you. And ah, crud. I guess this one has nothing on it. Okay, she's got five and then I think three actions. One, two, three, four, five. Oh, I don't get her to a fight, right? Well, there's lots of fights over here. So one, uh, I guess down here, two, three, four, five. Now, nah, two, three, four, five. And she can fight next turn. And she gets to give herself stuff, give somebody else stuff. I'll just up the love of the youngest son. Oh, and whoops, I guess this is going away. And roll for another one for the queen. Yes. All right, it's queen of living water. You should probably get out of there. Six movement. One, two, three, four, five, six, or five, six towards the teleporter. Sure. One, two, three, four, five, six. And her bonus does not help her move more. And she gets to boost somebody. Let's just boost both these people to have a bonus card. Why not? And that boosts herself to three, six, and she'll give herself one more. All right, now, youngest son can't pick this one to remove because then he'd have to remove that one and lose us the game. Which means I put us in a bad position. I guess I'll get rid of this one. Okay, he's got seven movement, three actions. We'll go one. Um, and then I assume two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, so we'll plan to get all those after we see how the fight goes. Looks like all the hypnotists are the same. So this guy's got 19, definitely faster than me, same 12 strength. But I've got my bow to plink him for 10, so I think we'll be fine. Oh, and I should have gotten a level one artifact after the last fight. Add three of the gifting one, sure. So his attack on me, actually not too bad. Um, but whatever, I just want to kill him. So I'll go and use my blue stone to cancel it. Now my 13 dice attack on him. Oh my God. I and mean, then I can change, wow, two of those into strikes. I could have changed three. So that's 13 damage and then it's overkill, but whatever, we'll use the bow and kill him. And there we go. That's three more. So I might have miscounted, but I think we're up to 20, unless uh, I just messed up. Either way, I think our options are getting severely limited. Should have had a dang bonus card. Okay, that would have given him another action. I guess I wouldn't have mattered. Or plus two love. He was already at max. Although, can you roll more than max? I don't know. Oh, you want another battle? The Laurel Wreath. Block two damage from your enemy. And that's uh, if you give up one of your successes. So, okay. That's kind of cool, I guess. All right, so with that, we can throw this one away without worrying. And not another one. Good. Okay, Unborn Maiden's getting, I think, two bonus cards. Okay, she's got... Ooh, three extra movement? We'll take that. Oh, no, no, sorry. I only get one of them, so two extra movement. Because there's seven movement and three actions. I guess you should fight some guys, too. So, like, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So, she'll get two of these and also fight. Now, this guy's got less attack, but more defense. Still faster than her. But she is pretty fit, and we've got her spear and her bonus damage from that. I'm feeling okay. His attack first. I mean, sure, we'll use a stone to cancel that. <laughs> now she's getting plus two, plus three, so that's five. Again, I don't know if that's every time or just once, but either way, five damage. Then 13 more dice, and we can change all those to hits. So that's 13 plus five, 18. He's got four life left. His return, strike. Oh my gosh, definitely canceling that. And then I think she cannot help but kill him. Yes, that's three more words. Yeah, I think we can call it there. I mean, I've only got 25 words. Theoretically, this hypnotist will give me another three, and then I've got three more cubes. But again, I might have messed up. Maybe I was supposed to put more out, maybe use a different color. 
But it seems like the most I can get would be like around a 30, because these guys just seem to prevent you taking away tiles. So I might have focused too much on combat there and not enough on speed and gathering, but again, I didn't know which uh, tail I would have, but uh, that's the basics of the game. You can kind of see how things go with that particular scenario. And let's get into my thoughts, what I like and what I'm not so sure about right now. So first of all, I think the pass phase in general is pretty cool. I like laying down the tiles, trying to put things near yourself and your partners to help them level up in an effective way. And the leveling itself up is pretty fun, although I do feel like some of the tracks and some of the skills for some characters aren't necessarily balanced. Like I find the bonus cards very swingy, so it seems like it makes more sense to do things, especially like the ones that just give you free level ups every turn. Those seem like a no brainer early on. So I do worry that unless I'm wrong about the balance or unless they develop that a little bit more that I might follow similar paths most of the time. Although to be fair, if I have a different mix of possible quests and like they all focus on fighting or don't focus on fighting at all, then I might level differently because of that. But that gets into something I like and don't like. I think not knowing which of the quests you're going to do and even not knowing like what the details of it are until you've played it make things pretty challenging. You saw on the one that I played, I kind of had to do things pretty specifically. So I think it would be interesting to play it again and really try to set up the map like in a particular configuration to get the most of like my words of knowledge or whatever. But having a random one out of three and potentially having leveled up wrong, like imagine if I had two that did not prioritize fighting and then I happened to draw the one that did and I not leveled up that way, I think it might be pretty impossible. And I've found these to be very challenging. Now, to be fair, you get a score no matter what. So the fact that like I didn't beat my quest doesn't mean that everything is over. I can still see how I did. But uh, yeah, I think it might be frustrating for some players to like level the wrong way and then just happen to get the one third chance of a quest that doesn't jive. You can easily house rule that to just say you're going to play a particular quest, but that might uh, make the game maybe too easy. I'm not sure. I think the theme is pretty great. I like the art that is based on mythology I'm not fully familiar with, but the little like hints they get of like these magical dark worlds and the quests themselves are certainly compelling. And combat is quick and pretty cool, especially with these blue cubes that kind of let you run away from combat or cancel one round of combat if things just don't go your way. And I think combat is a nice mix of risk reward because you get more for it than any other action can give you, but you have a chance of de-leveling yourself quite a bit if it doesn't go well, which I think does break up the leveling paradigm a little bit. Like if you want to really push love and uh, changing dice hope really early, then you can get like some huge bonuses from quick combat, which maybe would go against what I said earlier about this. So yeah, overall, I enjoy parts of Three Tail, others not so much. I do think it slightly overstays its welcome. Like the combination of the past and future can be a bit much for one session, although I guess you could break it up. If they like cut out like six tiles to shorten both of them, that may be a little bit better for my taste, but maybe not for somebody else. But certainly want to check out and see where they go with it. So go check out the Kickstarter page once it's live. And thanks for watching, everybody. I'll see you at the next stop.